Yes, it's one of those videos. Let's talk about cameras. My name is Damien Cooper and welcome to Monkey Pixel. Listen. So let's talk about the Canon 1DX Mark II, which most people consider to be the end-all be-all camera in 2017, 2018 even. But now we're going into 2019, there's so many different camera manufacturers coming out with awesome new cameras that shoot 4K 60, 10-bit internally, have so many different features. So here's my opinion on if the Canon 1DX Mark II is still worth buying in 2019 and that is for photo as well as video. and not so much photography although I studied photography I did purely photography back in the day so there's still a take for me to uh, go on for the photography side on the 1DX but we're focusing most on the video side but let's get the photography side out of the way first. So there's obviously no denying that the Canon 1DX Mark II is an absolute beast when it comes to photography and I would even say that if you go to any Olympic events or any big sport events that the Canon 1DX Mark II is the most represented camera there period. But not all of us are sports shooters, not all of us are shooting at the Olympics or the NFL or some other big sports events. Most of us shooting portraits, maybe some landscapes, a lot of us shoot for Instagram. So is this really the best camera for you if you're doing that kind of stuff? So we do a lot of photography when it comes to portrait work. We also have our Instagram channels that we are growing constantly. Go follow us on Instagram. So this is what we mainly use the photography portion for. So we don't need 16 frames per second. We don't really need a high speed camera at all. What we really do is portrait photography. So can this camera shoot portraits? Of course it can. Are 20 megapixels enough? They're way enough. But what about all these other cameras that are coming out? All of these mirrorless cameras with all their new features. So I was testing some Sony cameras as well as the new EOS R and they have really cool features when it comes to photography. At first, being an old school DSLR shooter, I didn't really like the electronic viewfinder, but it actually grew on me because actually seeing what um, your exposure will look like right in the viewfinder is actually a huge plus when it needs to be quick. The other thing is since I'm like 95% of the time shooting people, having an eye autofocus as well as face detection, not only when you're using the back screen but using it in the viewfinder as well, has helped me tremendously. So obviously the autofocus on the Canon 1DX Mark II is outstanding, but when you're looking through the viewfinder, you don't have eye autofocus, you don't have face detection, and these new DSLM cameras, they all have that. And that is a feature that I really, really like because you're nailing the focus on the face or the, even the eye pretty much 100% of the time with these new cameras. So that is one feature that I'm missing. And then there's the whole discussion about having two card slots. Yes, the 1DX has that, which is a cool feature. But then again, are you shooting weddings or are you shooting big sports events where you really need to have like a backup in camera? Then yes, dual card slots is really, really important. But for all the other purposes, it's really not. Like even if I have the two card slots, Unless I'm shooting a wedding, I'm never using a dual card slot uh, setup anyway. So the battery life is obviously great, but all these new cameras are catching up quickly. The new Sony cameras, for example, have way better battery life than the ones before and other manufacturers are catching up as well. And in my opinion, the whole like, oh, this battery is so great, really isn't that big of a deal because changing a battery takes 10 seconds. And all these small batteries are just a fraction of the big Canon battery, as well as this big brick of a charger. So you don't really um, gain a lot more space by just having two batteries instead of six for example, Sony batteries. So color science obviously is great, but then again, while shooting photography, most of us have their own presets. And if you don't, we sell presets up online, just check them out, link is in the description below. And it's raw you're shooting, so you can pretty much tweak your image to whatever you want it to look like anyway. Not so in video, but more on that later. 
Uh, so the color science is not really that big of a deal anyway. Reliability obviously is a big factor for this camera because it's dust proof, it's somewhat waterproof and it's really reliable because it's built like a tank. I mean, look at this thing. This is just massive. I bet I could even drop it and it would still work. But then again, this is $6,000. So for that price, I can get three A7 Mark III's. So in that matter, I could just like have three cameras and just drop one and one overheats and I still have a third one. So that isn't really an argument either. Okay, so this is pretty much my take on the photography side. Again, we're not really full-time working photographers. We do photography, we're doing paid work in photography, we do our Instagram, but that's pretty much it. And my verdict on that camera when it comes to photography alone, I would not buy it in 2019. Unless you're a sports photographer, like I already mentioned a couple times, if you're just doing Instagram portraits, travel, whatever, get a DSLM, get a newer camera, get something with a smaller body. You can attach a battery grip if you think it's too tiny, but save a lot of money and having actually a more modern camera with more modern features would probably be the way to go for me if I were to buy a photo camera in 2019. So now that we got that out of the way, I know most of you are here for the film and video features of the 1DX. And I've been having a love-hate relationship with this camera ever since I first tried it. What do I mean by that? Let's start with the things I really like about this camera. So there's all these features and I'm pretty sure all of you know these already, but you know, you have 120 frames, slow motion in 1080p with no crop sensor, uh, you have 4K 60, you have really great color science, you have the dual pixel autofocus, great battery life as I already stated before. So all of this makes for a really, really great camera, right? Right. But then again, if you look closer to all these features, then there's also some features missing that I, for example, really would want to have in a camera. And then again, that all depends on your shooting style. Are you a commercial videographer that shoots big paid commercials and all that kind of stuff? Are you needing a hybrid camera? Are you shooting weddings? Are you shooting travel videos? Are you a YouTuber? So this all kind of factors in, but I think we have a really broad spectrum of jobs that we are actually getting paid for. We're doing YouTube, we do a lot of travel, we also shoot commercials as well as sports events. So we really have a broad spectrum of jobs that we can cover. So I really have an outlook of most of the fields when it comes to videography that a camera needs to cover. So what are my downsides of this camera? So I obviously said that the 120p is really great and we use it a lot. If you haven't seen our latest video, then check it out um, because like, we're utilizing the 100 frames per second a lot in our travel videos because it gives the whole thing a really dreamy feel. And I am yet to see a better slow motion in a DSLR or DSLM as of today. And there's also another video where we compare it to the a7 III. So if you want to check this out, link is somewhere. So it shoots 4K 60, which is a big deal because I think as of this moment, end of 2019, there isn't another full frame DSLR or DSLM camera that actually shoots 4K 60. But I'm pretty sure it doesn't take long for other manufacturers to catch up. And there's also really downside, a big downside of the 4K 60 because the files are huge. It's shooting in a motion JPEG codec. Um, it shoots with 800 megabits a second. Don't get me wrong, I'd rather have a little bit of a higher Mbit codec than these really compressed 100 Mbit 4K video files on the Sony cameras. But 800 Mbits per second is really, really high. And we have a C200. So why would I want to shoot 800 Mbits per second in 4K 60 if for one gigabyte a second, I get 4K RAW in 10 bit on a real cinema camera. And that is what you have to ask yourself too. Is it really worth it as a commercial videographer to get a DSLR that shoots 4K 60 when you could just basically for almost the same price get a real cinema camera that does all of this just way better. Next thing up is the dynamic range. And that is my biggest pet peeve when it comes to the 1DX because the footage just doesn't have any dynamic range. 
It doesn't matter if you expose it correctly. I tried all kinds of picture profiles, my own custom ones. I even downloaded some from James Miller, no offense, but they're completely useless because they don't give you any more dynamic range, but basically just destroy the Canon colors. So you kind of have to work to get them back afterwards. So there's really no way to get more dynamic range out of this camera. And the dynamic range you already have within is just not there. So you have this professional camera that shoots all this cool 4K 60 or slow motion, but when you don't have the dynamic range nor look for uh, profiles, it's really not that great. And then for video, there's also so many other professional features missing, like focus peaking, there's no waveforms, it doesn't do anything externally that w you could benefit of, so there's no 10 bit externally, there's no even 4K externally. So all this kind of stuff, and you don't have a flip out screen. I mean, yeah, a lot of people can say just put a monitor on top, which we do most of the time, but then it adds to the cost, it adds to the weight, and if you put a small HD monitor on top of your 1DX, you're actually left with the same package as a C200, which is the same size and the same weight. So basically, where is the point? And shooting without that monitor, I found myself so many times doing some low angle shots and I was shooting completely in the dark. I had no idea what I'm shooting because I couldn't see anything. So you pretty much need a monitor as well. Then the camera doesn't have all these modern features. It doesn't have Wi-Fi. It doesn't have an internal uh, option to shoot time lapses, which kind of sucks because then you need another interval meter and that adds to size and more stuff you carry and more batteries you have to charge. So all in all, as a one fits all solution, I'm really not convinced going into 2019. And one big reason of that is the price. We already own the camera, so you could say it doesn't really matter, but buying this camera new in 2019, and it costs you somewhere between 5,500 and 6,300 euros, depending on where you are, that is just too much money in my books for the lack of professional features other cameras offer at a way lower price point. But then most of you say like, but it shoots 4K 60, what about 4K 60? Yes, 4K 60 is great. I don't know if you've seen my rant video about that quality doesn't matter. If you haven't, go check it out, link is somewhere. Because are you getting paid to shoot 4K 60 or do you just wanna shoot 4K 60? Because there's a huge difference between. Because most people just want to have 1080 footage, they can't even watch 4K footage, the files are too big, you have to store them, is the client paying for this? So these are all questions you have to put into consideration if you're going for this camera on the ability of shooting 4K 60 alone. So what's my verdict on the question of videography alone? If I were to get a camera to shoot videography alone in that price range, I would never go for the 1DX. Why? Because you can get the C200 for pretty much the same price which does almost everything better. It has internal ND filters, it has, has XLR outputs, it has 4K RAW, it doesn't shoot a great 120. That is definitely one downside. But as of late, I've been feeling that I keep this camera for the ability to shoot 100 frames and 100 frames alone. And that is a really pricey camera for that one feature. So again, just for videography, there's definitely better options. I would even go as far to say as I would probably prefer having one or even two A7 III's or rate for the A7S III whenever it comes out because the 1DX is just really, really expensive when it comes to that. But then again, what if you're a hybrid shooter and you can only take one camera? I never only take one camera on my jobs anyway because I want to shoot a time lapse on the tripod while shooting something else or I'm traveling with Belle all the time so she shoots as a second shooter. Sometimes she just uh, does some behind the scenes stuff. So we're traveling with two cameras anyway. But if you're one that only travels with one camera, I'm not sure. The camera is really expensive. I probably wouldn't buy one in 2019. It doesn't have all these features other cameras have, neither in photography nor in video. Yes, like when you look at the spec sheets, I think that's the only full frame, cam full frame camera that has all these features lined up, but doesn't really do most of them really great. So you have to decide for yourself. But my opinion is 
no, the Canon 1DX Mark II is not worth buying in 2019 and we are actually considering selling it and just getting a Canon EOS R as a small photography travel camera on the side which shoots C-Log in great 1080 um, and have the C200 as a main production camera. And I think for most people that makes way more sense than having this one really expensive bulky body of a 1DX Mark II that doesn't really excel at anything because pretty much every camera does something better specialized when it comes to a particular feature. Let me know what you think. Go hard in the comments, Sony fanboys, Canon fanboys, what do you like, what do you hate about the 1DX and would you consider buying one in 2019? And if so, why? Because I'm really curious because we're really thinking about selling ours and I kind of need a decision to make right now. So subscribe to our YouTube channel, like, and I'll see you on the next one.